OK, so let's have a look at Nmap for port scanning. So if we have a look at the options we've got. So this is our host discovery options already looked at. And these are our scanning options. And within scanning, we're doing port scanning. So we can specify ports with these options. So you've got various different types of scan. This is the default Nmap scan, which is a, a SYN scan which doesn't do the full connect, resets the connection after it gets an ACK back. That's a TCP full connection, where it does the full handshake. Uh, this is an ACK scan. This is how to do UDP specific scans. Um, and then you can play around with the flags, so you can set null, nothing, no flags, fin flags, all flags. Uh, and this is how to set individual flags. So there's lots of combinations you can do. So within our scanning, um, whether we do TCP or UDP, we can specify our port with the minus P flag, um, or we can specify a port range. This is an individual port. This is a range. This is the full range. So we would have to, this um, defaults to TCP, so minus P, uh, 65,500 TCP ports we would scan with that. Um, so by default, and that does uh, its top 1,000 ports. So we have to specify something else if we don't want it to do that. Uh, so there's various different uh, settings you can do in it. It'll do various ranges based on its uh, uh, configuration files. So this is how to do UDP, combined UDP and TCP port scanning. So you can specify specific or ranges of UDP and TCP ports um, with the minus P, U colon and T colon. So there's lots of different options as you can see. So what we'll do first is let's have a look at a single port. So in the lab we're looking at um, a range of machines. So this is actually port sweeping. We're looking for a single port across a range of machines. So instead of looking across a range of machines to see which is up, um, we're looking across a range of machines for specific services. So let's have a look at that first. So if we do our local range, um, so this is our local network we're connected to. So this is 29 uh, mask starting at 88 and our gateway is at 94. So if we just scan 90 to 95. So give us a little range to play with. So that's specifying the target range instead of a single target. Um, and let's just specify a single port with the minus P option. Uh, and let's set our TCP dump running. So just to listen on traffic going out and coming back to our, our Kali machine. Let's run that, might be good. <laughs> so that's now going to capture everything. So what we get is it does a some sort of ping to start with, some sort of uh, host discovery to see if the host's up and if the host's down um, it possibly doesn't do anything else. Uh, and if it finds a host which is up scans it for the port we've specified and this is saying that it's actually found that port is open so we've got a web server or we've got something running on port 80 um, TCP port 80 let's have a look at the packets it's sent so it's actually used ARP to see if the hosts are up locally so it hasn't bothered to send by the looks of it ports to Packets to port 80 if the hosts aren't actually up. So when it's found a host that's up, it's actually sending a SYN flag to port 80. And this is the host replying, so the web server replying to us um, with its ACK. And this is 
not completing the handshake. So this is the default scan that Nmap does, which is a SYN scan, so it doesn't do a full TCP connect scan. It actually resets if it gets a response to the port um, to save time. So if we port scan, let's just do the same range. Let's use the scan option T, which is the full connect scan, and we should see a difference in the packets. So it's given us the same result, saying it's found the, the port is open, the service is running. But if we analyse this, you'll find we send us in, we get an ACK back, and we complete the connection, and then reset. Okay, so it's going to take longer, um, it will log that connection as being established, so slightly different type of scan with the minus T. So when you have a look at your um, Netcat scanning, that's the, the type of connection you're going to get with Netcat if you monitor your traffic, you're going to get a full connect. So your netcat net port scanning, if we, if we tried that, you would see your full um, uh, TCP handshake. So we can use So let's try our local Gateway. And let's look for Ranger ports. Let's say ports 10 to 25. Ah, so let's find different services open. So remembering if we don't give our list of ports, it's going to run an extensive port scan and you can see the traffic. So we shouldn't do that in our Linux and Zoo, Zoo environment. Um, so we want to keep our traffic down to a minimum. Um, so uh, we could look at the services file. So there's a file called mmap services which is the there we are. So this is our ports. This is what our port scanning is based on. Okay, so our services file is our ports and our service probes is our port or service fingerprinting. So let's have a look at our service file. So what you'll be able to see is a giant list of a couple of thousand services, well-known services and their port numbers and protocols. So we've got FTP. Um, so you'll notice that this is the frequency that the port or the likelihood that the port's going to be open. Um, so you can see that FTP running on TCP is a lot more likely than FTP running on UDP, for example. If we search for HTTP, for example, you'll see the same thing. So it's a very likely um, open port and uh, rather less likely to be running over uh, on UDP. Okay, so this is... Uh, so Nmap uses these if you tell it to do some default scans. It will pick the top um, frequencies and uh, try those first. Our service probes is interesting, just have a quick look just now. So these are the fingerprints. Uh, so these are regular expressions mostly, um, matching the fingerprints of what you would get back when you connect to a service. So if we try to find something like um, IIS, what is this? Find. Yeah, 
So these are some of the IIS signatures. That's SSL, in fact. This is extensive signatures which can match against all the different services um, when we try and fingerprint services uh, later. And that's the files. So if you go and have a look at those files under user share Nmap, it uh, gives you an insight as to uh, what Nmap's using for its, its configuration. Oops. So if we try a scan for some UDP ports. So let's do a UDP scan and let's just scan in the range of yeah. ten to one fifty and see what we find. You can see the UDP packets being sent. So we've got um, our range of packets we're sending out. Uh, you'll notice that the um, the packets aren't always in the same order. If you want packets to go out in numeric order, you have to use the minus R flag, which means you can analyze your output a little bit easier. So that's an idea while you're uh, learning. So you can see that we've actually found a couple of UDP ports as well. So it's always uh, worth remembering that by default Nmap uses TCP ports and you have to specify UDP scans. So again, if you have time and you're targeting a single server, you would maybe target the 65,500 UDP as well as the 65,500 um, TCP ports. Uh, so you can do all the same uh, specifics as well. You can individual uh, ports. Um, so we could try 50 and 53 and or 1, 2, 3 individually and just scan those three ports which is a lot quicker, obviously. Uh, something else you might want to try is uh, the flag slash reasons. This takes our verbose scanning and extends it um, a little bit. So this actually gives us some details about why it's decided, um, what it's scanning for, and why it's decided that uh, it's given us the responses it's given us. So we've actually got a UDP response, which is quite unusual uh, from in the NTP port, which is why it said it's open. Uh, and yeah, it's just that is another uh, option you can use, especially when you're um, testing the thing out for the labs. So another thing we should be looking at is. Let's do a default scan and let's just go across our, our range. Let's just look for port 80 and 81 across our range of addresses. Okay, so it's saying host down and what we are actually doing is we're doing host discovery scans each time. So what we can do is once we find machines that we know are up, so we know this machine is up, we don't want to do host discovery scans anymore. So we want to say I'm thinking it's that's correct. And that hopefully yep. So you'll see just immediately goes to the port scanning, so it immediately um, goes to sending packets to do with port scanning and it doesn't uh, do the host discovery. Uh, 
packets so that especially when you're going across onto a non-local network segment uh, that's going to save you a lot of packets and a lot of noise on the network um, so what we can also do um, is we can specify an output file and an output format so we could just redirect us to a file and that would basically give us this output to the file what we can do is we can use output format um, such as the greppable output format uh, and that would be uh, so let's just so let's output our web sweep example across several machines uh, to that file just try to make sure that's correct okay so we also get the output to the screen should have also created our file. So there's our file with our greppable output where it has the host on the same line as uh, the status in this case. So what we're looking for in this case would be um, up. What we could do is, I think up is, yeah, that's what we do in the. So what we could do in this case is we could look for open ports. So we could just grep out um, the machines that have open ports. So we could do up, which would give us our machines, which we know are there. Should be quite handy, but let's grep out this. So let's grep out the second field but only if we find open so let's grab for open uh, in our web server sweep file and let's pipe that into cut and we we'll use space delimiter and we'll just get the second field Okay, so that basically gives us our hosts which have open ports. So you can see that you can use cut, awk, and grep to um, build up some fairly useful um, little uh, one-liners, little scripting one-liners to uh, format and scan and filter your outputs. So you could um, you could actually do that and pipe that or you could redirect it into a file of all the servers that you've found um, which you might want to then scan or in fact I'm going to take a chance and uh, let me just check I think we might be able to redirect us straight back in Okay, so I looked it up and it's I capital L means it reads from the input file and if we use a minus that should read Yep. So that's actually taken that output Oops It's taken that output from the cut and it's actually fed it straight into an Nmap full scan. So it's done a full scan of that host. So you can see how you can start to automate these processes. I shouldn't have really done a full scan, but never mind, don't tell Gordon. Okay, so that gives you some indication of uh, some of the port scanning techniques we can do with Nmap.